Our next contest of the Better Photography Weekly Challenge is Juxtaposition. Our judge and mentor is Suresh Nanganathan. Born in Switzerland, Suresh moved back to India, his parents' country of origin, in 2008. Soon after, overwhelmed by the colors, sound, and overbearing human presence in this new environment, he picked up his camera to make sense of all the chaos surrounding him. Over the last few years, he has been exploring the streets of the world and of his home city, Bombay. A founding member of Bombay Collective, his work has appeared in various publications such as Creative Image Magazine, Aisha Magazine, World Street Photography Book, and 11 Top Street Photographers. Hello and welcome. Hi, hi. thank you for having me. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's get into this, the theme of the month. The theme of this month is juxtaposition. I'm gonna uh, run you through some examples from people uh, who've been really mastering this genre for, for many, many years. But before we, uh, we go into the, the actual images, let me <clears throat> briefly give you a quick definition of what uh, juxtaposition is. We'll start with, okay, the, the English uh, dictionary uh, definition from uh, Merriam-Webster. Juxtaposition is the act or uh, an instance of placing two or more things side by side often to compare, contrast, or to create an interesting effect. Um, so my, my take when it comes to juxtaposition in the, in the realm of uh, photography, uh, especially in the realm of uh, street photography, for me, it's an act of imagination. It requires you to look at the screen, at the scene in front of you, and to find connections between elements that feel completely uh, disconnected in the, in the first, uh, in the, in the, in the, when, when you look at it. The resulting image basically will be greater than the sum of its parts. So basically, you'll, you'll have a few, uh, one element here, one element there, connect them and you create something a little more magical. There are many different types of uh, juxtapositions than one can create. I'll show you a few examples in the next few slides. Uh, one type of juxtaposition that one can create is echoes. Echoes by echoes, I mean similarities between different elements in the frame. A few examples by what well, one uh, the first one is mine here you can see a, a chicken on one side a bag that looked like a chicken both of them kind of having a dialogue together and this is this was how my my image was created this particular image by the master of uh, juxtaposition the indian master of juxtaposition the um again here the the whole play was with with the lines here, uh, you can see the lines on the, the bus uh, echoing. And then the, it, it also creates something a little bit uh, magical because you have you know curved lines and then straight lines here, right on the t-shirt, then again, curved lines. So it creates a little bit of a dialogue between uh, the, the bus and the, the lines on the t-shirt the of, the, of that person. Another example by, uh, by Vineet, uh, here again, uh, these birds, I don't know if they're ducks or geese, uh, with, with these very fa uh, funny facial red, very stark red uh, face, uh, which, are, which are actually correlating with the, um, uh, the water taps, which are red as well. And, and here again, what is even more magical is that you have three on one side, three on the other side. So the echoes happen in two levels, the colors, and at the same time, the, uh, the number of elements in the frame. Here, a uh, picture by his photographer, Eda Swong from Hong Kong. Uh, again, an echo. It's, it's a seemingly simple shot, quote unquote. Uh, it's just, uh, I mean, using the, uh, the green man from the, from the light with a, with a poster in the background, but finding the angle, connecting both of them, uh, requires uh, a specific eye, you know. We come across these uh, these scenes, uh, you know, every day. We come across posters, we come across uh, these lights, but how how do you see them? How do you connect them? These are the questions that you need to ask yourself when you move in this in this kind of scene. Another example, again uh, by the Swong, uh, self-explanatory. You, you have these trains here. The, uh, the evolution of the trains, and then this man with the white mask, who echoes the, the, the last train. Uh, 
You can also do uh, echoes with, with color. This is uh, taken by Turkish photographer Sotem Tokin. Uh, here, the echo is the actual color uh, and the shapes that it takes, uh, the, the red, but also the, the white that becomes a little bit of blue that connects with the blue here at the bottom. So yeah, the, there are many, many different echoes that one can create. One can create with colors, can create with posters, with uh, different people. I mean, the possibilities are infinite. The idea is to be able to see them. Another type of uh, pictures that one can create with juxtaposition is illusion. When you collect these different elements together and it creates something a little bit magical. A few examples. This is one of mine, uh, taken in Singapore. The uh, smartphones was connecting with the, the yellow lines. And uh, I mean, it looks like the, the waves from the smartphone go in different directions. This is by a um, fantastic photographer in China, uh, based in China called Tao Yu. Um, again, I mean, something incredible find a cage, find a person behind, connect them both, and then it looks like the person is actually inside the cage. So there are different, I mean, the, the whole play here works with perspective, with finding elements, you know, uh, the, the person was actually in the, I mean, sitting in the right spot, but also at the right distance so that he would fit inside the cage. So you need to really gauge those things. You need to move forward, move back until all the elements the cage becomes bigger, the man becomes smaller. So these are the things that you need to look at. It's not just like snap and shoot. You need to, if you find something like this, you need to work the scene, move around a little bit until the elements connect to the right place. Again, an image taken by, uh, by Sarkhan, um, um, self-explanatory, uh, just the, the hand that extends with the, with the poster. Uh, but also a connection with the with the blues and a connection with the, the yellows in the background. So we, there you can you can play with multiple elements. You don't have to just look at one uh, one way, like just echoes. You can look at echoes, but at the same time you can find colors and things like that that will connect. Uh, I mean uh, that will connect your image uh, together. And then here, the twisted hand is obviously the the element that uh, that creates that uh, that magic. Again, picture by, by Vineet, um, fantastic shot, so probably spur of the moment. I, I don't know how he took the shot, but um, again, a play with perspective creates an illusion that this man in the foreground is carrying the man in the background who's trying to escape. That, uh, you can create all kinds of stories. He's kind of trying to escape from, uh, from the bowl uh, he's carrying. One more shot by, by Das Wong. I'll keep repeating pretty much the same uh, masters in juxtaposition because these people have created work that's you know, extraordinary. So I, I keep referring to them. And there'll be a, a list of links at the, at the end of this presentation. Here again, I think the self-explanatory, uh, the, the head, connecting, I mean, the, the head connecting with the tree and creates uh, a huge afro for this guy. Uh, super well seen. Also, the, uh, what's very important here is to be able to see how the light handles, um, I mean, how the light is handled on one side. Also, uh, connecting it, you know, making sure that uh, the things are aligned properly because one little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and the illusion uh, gets broken. We need to make sure that you know you connect your elements properly. You align things right. Another way that you can uh, use uh, juxtaposition is to create humorous shots, uh, especially with posters and things like that. A lot of people create shots that are uh, you know jokes, a little bit of one-line jokes, but jokes nonetheless. And and these again require you to pay attention. Uh, this picture makes a uh, works because the guy here on the right is bent is bent at an angle and well his, uh, his bum is right uh, in front of the poster so you know if the guy was just standing straight the image wouldn't be uh, uh, so um, so impactful so successful 
So you need to make sure that these these are some of the things that are taken care of. You know, it's not just like point and shoot, but wait for the right action to happen for the shot to uh, to to be elevated. Similar type of shot uh, again by Babinit. Again here, this works because the the guy in red is bent. If he wasn't, then the shot wouldn't be as funny. Shot by by Serkan, four footed chicken. Um, yeah, for me this is this. I mean, again, this can be an illusion. This can be funny. I found it very funny because uh, I always like these kind of uh, strange animals. And this again uh, again works. I mean, I keep repeating the timing. Uh, you know, the alignment. All these things work. If he had moved one step to the right or one step to the left or waited for the chicken to be. Little, a little higher, a little lower, it wouldn't have worked. Here it works because both the chickens are perfectly aligned. One after the other. And yeah, one more funny shot from, uh, from Edas. Uh, this again, it's a, it's a question of timing. Probably this person was moving and uh, those two birds standing on his head are, are you know, for me, were, were very funny. But uh, again, um, one important thing that I'm looking for is not just that juxtaposition per se. That's one element in the frame, but make sure that all the other elements in your frame are still uh, still work. Here, in this particular case, all the lines here, the, these lines on the left, uh, echo the, um, uh, the, the, the lights on the, on the right, you know, all the, the shapes, the lines, uh, they all add graphical elements. So make sure that uh, you include these things. Don't don't make it so obvious, like, okay, I saw this, this is funny, I take it. Make it in such a way that it becomes a surprise as part of a bigger frame. Those are the things that I uh, tend to look like when I look at when I try to uh, do these frames. Finally, uh, another thing that uh, one needs to consider when we're looking at uh, or trying to take juxtaposition shots is that you don't necessarily need people for these kind of shots. Any uh, human presence or anything, you can actually connect different, different elements in a frame uh, to, to create something magical, even if you don't have people. This is one of mine. Uh, yeah, the, I saw, I saw the, the, the painting on the wall and the motorcycle in front of it didn't move the mirrors. The mirrors were just positioned in the right way to create these little, this full looking sunglasses to, uh, to, the, to the cow. So yeah, uh, you can look at uh, these, these elements, you know, and figuring out ways to connect them. This beautiful shot by, uh, by Siegfried Anselm, again, uh, it requires you to have a quirk, to have an eye, but also a very clear vision on geometry, on how to connect these elements to create this yeah, beautiful pattern and uh, magical element. Sometimes you don't actually even need to have, uh, you know, different elements to connect, you know, just look at things that are happening here. The juxtaposition is actually just the, the line that creates a face against, uh, against the blank road, you know, so don't look at just things which are in front of you. Look up, look down, look to the sides, uh, look behind you. There are things happening across every element of the frame. The, the most important thing is to be able to slow down and pay attention to these things. This, taken, this picture was taken by Francesco Sembolini from the team. Yeah, again, and something it can be as simple as a line that gets cut right before uh, a pole, you know. Uh, Again, in this case, Sridharj, uh, Sridhar from, uh, from India, um, looked up, found this line. Uh, somehow the line just got cut before the, before the, uh, uh, the light and it connected and created something uh, extraordinary. Uh, beautiful, beautiful shot by, by Das Wong. Uh, I don't even know how he saw this, but uh, again, uh, using some water droplets on the window and finding a cloud right behind it. He was able to create, 
a magical, really a beautiful image. Uh, again, that has no people, that has actually no human element, but that has, um, you know, different elements of nature that are completely unrelated and connected together to create something extraordinary. Another one from uh, from Edas Wong, uh, again, extremely well seen using the exit sign, the reflection probably of an exit sign against uh, dark mountainous or hilly background and creating this yeah, I mean, the shining man on the top of the mountain. Again, extraordinary and magical. Um, yeah, just some quick advices uh, to, to, to close this. One is that juxtaposition is probably one of the most uh, widely used tools by photographers. And I mean, if you, if you type street photography, Chances are that you will get a lot of juxtaposition images. They, they are high impact. You know, they're, they're, the moment you see it, you can find the, the one line joke or the, you know, the, the elements that connect and, and they're, they're high impact. But uh, the flip side of that is that images that are using this style can end up being quite cliche. You know, by, so whatever you do, try not to go just for the easy shot, like just a person walking uh, you know, in front of a painted wall and you saw like some loose connection between them or replacing, you know, the head of a person with a fruit. There are a lot of these kind of shots. Instead, keep asking yourself, first of all, like for example, in the example of the, the person walking in front of the, the wall, um, keep asking yourself, would that picture be the same if another person walked? If it's the case, then your shot is not that successful. Instead, really try to find something unique some connection that makes the image really you and that requires you to pay to pay attention really pay attention to the smallest details these are really works of imagination so as much as possible you know don't be afraid to experiment try different things you know try different combinations um look for things that hasn't been done before it takes a lot of practice you have a lot of failures you know make sure that you align sometimes just a little bit of misalignment will uh, will um, you know, uh, make the picture unsuccessful. So make sure that these things, uh, you know, are, are taken care of. Practice a lot, work the scene. If you find a juxtaposition, something, uh, just try different angles. There might be an angle that works better than the one that you took your first shot. So work the scene as much as possible. And last but not least, well, these are you know, fun pictures to take. So have fun, have fun. And finally, uh, just some references for, um, uh, I mean, the artists that are preferenced uh, with, the, with the links. So you can check out for more inspiration by, by looking at these different, uh, different pages. All the best.